What's going on, everybody? Rob Doster here from the Field of 68. And today we're going to bring you another episode in our NBA Draft Prospect Profile Series. These are going to be dropping throughout May and throughout June, a couple a day. So if you do like this content, make sure you subscribe to the channel and do hit that like button. Anything that you can do to interact with these videos, it really does help the channel. It helps more people like you find this content. And since I have you here, make sure you check out our Instagram and TikTok pages. We are going to be pumping out more unique content over there throughout the spring and the summer heading into the 2022-23 college basketball season. Like, for example, did you know that Penny Hardaway was shot when he was in college? I didn't know that. You can find that story right now live on our TikTok and Instagram pages. The links for those are in the description below. So without further ado, let's get into another Field of 68 NBA Draft Prospect Profile. Welcome back to another episode of the Field of 68's 2022 NBA Draft Prospect Profiles. My name is Rob Doster. Joining me today, we have Sam Bassini, the host of the Game Theory Podcast, a writer for The Athletic, and the best NBA Draft content creator on these here internets. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Kofi Coburn, who was one of the most productive players in college basketball last year. He averaged 21 points. He averaged 10 and a half boards. He blocked one shot a game. He only averaged 0.8 assists per game, which is something we're going to talk about. He only shot 63% from the free throw line, which is something we're also going to end up talking about. But Sam, this dude is seven foot. He's got a seven foot four wingspan. I believe he checked in that today at the combine. Yeah. He weighs 293 pounds and he's kind of slimmed out a little bit to get down to 293. This dude is an absolute monster. Talk to me about Kofi. Yeah, the whole idea with Kofi here is that you're hoping you can get a big physical dude who is athletic as a leaper and who can high point the ball and finish at the basket at a really high level. Uh, Illinois ran a lot of post-up actions for him. NBA teams are not going to do that. Like, it's just not going to happen. Uh, it's going to be more the sophomore year Kofi we saw with Io Desumu, where he played in pick and rolls with Io and really made it work that way. Um, he's a hard roller to the rim. He's really effective in that way. He's a great finisher at the basket. Guys bounce off of him because he's so strong. I'll say this. I think he got better in terms of his ability defensively and drop coverage settings, he's never going to be a switch guy. He's not really going to be a guy that makes an impact in the playoffs because of what we've seen throughout this NBA playoffs. It's just really hard to be big. If you can't guard out on an Island uh, in the NBA, when these moments come along, because guys like Jason Tatum, Jimmy Butler, Luka Doncic, Stephen Curry, they're going to bring you away from the basket every single time and make it work that way. Um, but there is so much need for, bigs who can give competent minutes in the NBA during the regular season. And I wouldn't rule out Kofi, uh, if only because his, uh, his ability and drop coverage got a little bit better. He's physical, he's enormous, and he finishes well at the rim. There are some things, though, that he's going to have to improve on, and I think that you kind of noted one of them in your intro. Yeah, so there's there's two things he needs to work on. But before we get to that, there, there's I do think that there is a spot for him somewhere on an NBA roster playing a role similar to what like Boban plays or what like JaVale McGee plays where you're just in there to give 10, 12, 14 minutes on the nights when you're going up against someone like a Joel Embiid or you're going up against someone like a Nikola Jokic um, where you need some big physical bodies to just kind of take a, a, a beating man like 82 games is a lot of games so if he could become someone that you know gets the ball within eight feet and he's going to score you know he's this hyper efficient uh, finisher around the basket and he's just kind of good enough in drop coverage and good enough on the glass and good enough to be able to kind of just get in the way of some of these great NBA centers. I think that there's a job for him. I, he's never going to be a star. He's not going to average 20 and 10 in the yeah. NBA, but I think there's a job for him. There can be. Yeah. Like I think that he has to find the right fit with Kofi. It's going to be all about mm -hmm. finding the right team that works for him. Uh, the Utah Jazz stand out as a team that like a couple of years ago drafted Yudoka Azabuke almost entirely on the back of his defensive upside. Uh, big, strong, physical dude. It's a spot like that where he's going to have to find a way to fit in. Guys, the prior teams that prioritize having bigs on the court at all times. Not every team is like that. They're diminishing uh, number of spots for guys like Kofi. 
he's a real borderline guy for me. I think you could make a case that maybe a team like Utah, maybe a team like Portland, uh, but Portland's kind of running a different defensive scheme now. Like it, it's, it's tricky, man. Like it's, it's not a guarantee that he finds a spot by any stretch and to do it. I think that he's really he has to be the best. To... Yeah. He has to be the best in the world at it. Right. Like he has to be, yeah. he's got to be like a top three in the world at doing that job for him to find the right spot. There's that. And then he's also going to have to really improve as a passer and playmaker. Like yep. he can't just be a guy that blindly runs to the rim every time, which frankly is what he would have to be right now in large part, because he can't really make an impact in short role settings. He's not a shooter. He's not a passer or playmaker. He doesn't see the court all that well right now. And on top of it, like he's not really a guy that can put the ball on the deck once and like drive to the rim in a short roll, right? The way that NBA teams work now is if you don't have a guy that can be a real impact player in short rolls that can hurt you in some way, either by taking advantage of the four on three that presents from the situation I'm about to describe, or that can take advantage as a shooter from three, teams are just going to put two on the ball. They're going to double the ball. They're going to take the ball out of the ball handler's hands and they're going to force it into someone else's hands. And with how short the shot clock is in the NBA, that's when offenses get really, really bogged down. So Kofi really desperately has to improve his ability to make short roll passing reads. Uh, Otherwise, I don't think he sticks. We've seen guys like Kofi make improvements in this regard. You know, Clint Capella, I think, was better and more athletic than Kofi is. But Clint was a terrible passer when he got to the NBA and improved. He started to hit that corner kickout read. He started to hit the dump off to the big uh, in the dunker spot. There are ways to kind of make it work, but without that ability in short rolls to at least make passing reads, I don't think Kofi's ever going to shoot. I think it's got to be passing reads. Without that, I think that he's probably not going to stick, to be honest. Yeah, I think I think he got better at that. As he uh, like, as he got spent time in college, he's only really been playing basketball for I think it's like six or seven years now. He's he's yeah, not some that. he's not someone that's been playing since he was um, five, six, seven, eight years old. So it would make sense that there's a little bit of uh, a, a growth that needs to happen on, from a basketball IC, uh, IQ scale. And I think it's hard, like you said, they didn't run a ton of pick and rolls with him last year. Be, that we thought they were going to, and then Andre Corbello. Uh, turned into Andre right. Corbello, so it did it didn't really happen last season. Well Andre um, Corbello got concussed, let's say. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. uh there was a lot of just throw the ball into Kofi in the post and let him be bigger than everybody that he's going up against. Uh, but I think I would not rule it out for him to be able to get there, but he's got a lot of stuff that needs to happen for him to get there. And the ceiling is as a guy that's you know best case scenario probably Boban. Is that you think that's is that fair? The level to which Boban is more skilled than what people give him credit for is very high. <laughs> Boban is just an incredible, like if, if Boban could move his feet at all, he would be a starting center in the NBA. Like it's just so hard when you're seven foot four and you really can't move at all. Kofi is really, he's up against it in terms of the skill set perspective, but he needs to be able to block shots. He needs to be able to be big, rebound the basketball, just be elite at the things he's already good at. In addition, he needs to not get killed in drop coverage, which he's made strides in and has gotten better at. But I think that, you know, not having NBA guards turn the corner on you in more open space is an entirely different ball game. And then he needs to be able to make short roll passing reads. Those, there's still a long way to go for Kofi, I think, to make the NBA. But you can't teach seven foot with a seven foot four wingspan with a probably nine foot four and a half standing reach. Like there are things that you can't teach that he has and he's physical. He's strong. He has a chance at the very least. And he has one of the best names that we've seen in college basketball in a long time. Listen, this has been another edition of the field of 68's 2022 NBA draft prospect profiles. That was Sam Vecini. Make sure you subscribe to the game theory podcast. I will have the YouTube channel and his Apple feed in the link and in the description below. We're going to have more than 40 of these videos coming out, so make sure you like this video and you subscribe to the channel. Go back and watch all of these. It's great bingeable content for the month of May. June.